we got here. We have a window yet. You can see that there's no buck on it yet. So what we're going to do, we've made that two inches too big all the way around. Took the rough opening side, added four inches top and bottom, or the side to side, top the bottom. And um, we're going to now cut the fox buck and glue it in place and then brace it on the inside ready for concrete. Hey, we're ready now to put our fox buck in. We've got our rebar all the way around. Here they used two number five bars all the way around, or 15M bar all the way around the opening. And they're all in place and tied really nice exactly where they're supposed to be. We can inspect them. It's all good. So now we're ready to cover it up with the fox buck. So now our fox buck comes in one piece and they're four foot long. And this rough opening happens to be 36 by 26. So 36 plus the four because we have to add two inches on either side for the thickness of the fox buck because it's two inches thick. So that makes out 40 inches. So if I mark at 40 inch, we'll see how that works. 40, 40 inch works really well and what I'm looking at here, I want to make sure that I'm not going to cut all the way through a cross tie. This is actually going to be dead center between the two. I would rather cut the sides first and put them in place and then the top and bottom if it means I wouldn't have to cut through one of those cross ties. I don't really care which way they go. Some people think you have to do the top first and then the sides. It doesn't really matter because you're going to hold it all together with some lumber later anyways. So that works. Let's see how the vertical piece works. Now this is the rough opening plus the four inches, two inches top and bottom for the fox buck. The rough opening is 26 and if I do the top and bottom full length, I would want to do the sides, the rough opening sides, which is 26. So now I'll mark 26 and that actually works out really well. That means I will miss the cross ties, it'll be a nice clean cut. So now I will cut these. Now to cut these, I will use a piece of um, buck or a piece of block that I have around. I'll just use another buck to get my square. Mark that. And then I'm going to use my fox block saw. Pretty easy to cut these. So here you can see, I only had to cut through this plastic here from our tie. I didn't have to cut through all that other plastic. So that worked out quite nice and that would be our bottom. Now if I wanted to, I could just use this part and use one of the scrap pieces, extend it on and get my 26 inch piece. Very easy to do because there's really no waste in the fox buck. Okay, so when you're putting the fox buck into place, I like to start with the sill. It's very easy to put the sill in, glue it into place, tape it down, make sure that the glue is not going to spread and, and lift it. And, and it gives you a good foundation for putting your other pieces in. So now what we've done with the fox buck is we put fox faces every 16 inch. We recommend that you cut those sections out to monitor the concrete placement to make sure that there's no air underneath this fox buck. You want to have that full of concrete because once it's full of concrete, if you get concrete in these grooves and into these holes that hold onto our tie, this buck is not removable. In fact, it's passed the wind tests so flying debris hitting it, it will hold your window in place. So tornadoes, hurricanes, this will actually work and it's been passed. We've got testing to prove it. So you really need to monitor that and make sure that these vent holes are open. So I'm going to cut those holes open right now before I put this into place. Now you're not limited to the spaces where the fox face is. I can actually cut in between that. It's just if you cut in between that, you'll cut a little bit more plastic inside there. In this case, we could probably get away with one hole because it's a big enough opening. So now that's a debate. Which do we do? I think I'll just cut one out for now and then during concrete, if we need another one, we can always cut another one real quick. So this is how I cut my holes out. You can do it a round hole. I like to do it a rectangular hole because I can get a nice big hole in and it allows me to get my vibrator into there. 
So that, so that's the hole I would make. It's just a rectangular hole. I can stick my vibrator in there. I can make sure the concrete gets pulled through properly. If we get concrete that's a little bit too stiff, I can always cut another hole. But I think that's going to do it for this job, just because this window is not that big. Okay, a few more things that you're going to need. We use some spray foam, great stuff. The red can, the black can, doesn't really matter. I like expansive spray foam. I don't like the low expansive. For some reason, everybody in the ICF industry thinks you need low expansion. I love high expansion because it actually holds and it's strong. Uh, you just have to hold it in place so that it doesn't move anything and don't use too much. And it's cheaper. So I don't, I don't know where you lose using this. You just have to know how to use it. What I do to hold this into place is use tape. Now I use this red tape. It shows up good in the videos. You guys can see where I taped. And it's called tuck tape. Now, this is probably only available in Canada, but it's just a packing type tape. But this tape, it sticks. It sticks in all weather. It sticks in the winter time. And they use this tape for air barrier. So when you're putting like a Tyvek type of an air barrier on the outside of a house, this is the tape that they use to do that, that stripe. So your, your tape in your region might be blue, it might be white, might be black, I don't know what it is, but it's that type of a tape, that's what I'm using. You can see I'm not shy with it. So that's our bottom with the hole. Just make sure it's seated properly. There's a little groove on the fox buck that holds it in place. I'm good. Okay, so that's the bottom done. You can see I've taped it real good. Wherever there's a gap, that spray foam will fill that in. He give, makes it nice and strong. So when you place concrete, this part here will not fold out. It will hold in the concrete pressure because I've spray foamed it. Now to do the top, it's kind of a, a difficult thing to put it in there and tape it all at the same time. Now, I could put this in and put the sides in to hold it. That works really well. But another way you could do it is just put the tape on beforehand and then fold the tape up once it's in place. I'm going to use the sides to hold this one up just because I have them. They're the right size. Everything fits really nice. So I'll just have this one sitting like this and I'll have these parts ready on the side. Now I will put my spray foam onto this part before I put it up top. You can see this little groove. That's what I want to have seated inside the block. <coughs> Quite a bit of spray foam. You probably don't need that much. Uh, the tip came off on that spray can. I didn't want to open another one. Hey, this is a real job. You know, you ad lib, you make it work. There, those are just to hold it while I tape it. Just get my ladder a little bit closer. It would have been nice to have a little bit longer ladder. That is, I want to continue this groove of concrete all the way around. So to do a proper job, you actually want to notch this, break that out, and that way the concrete continues all the way around in that groove. So I'm going to cut them in now, 
And it's the pieces that go all the way through that need to be cut. Make sure you put the fox faces right side up. I might be there taking pictures, you know. You notice I put some spray foam in this joint, that's going to seal it up. Now we won't have any leakage, you'll have full R value all the way through. So that's it. Fox Buck is pretty easy. It's kind of nice that you can get all your rebar looking into this all the way around. You can see it properly and put that in. And put this in last, it gives you a perfectly square opening. Everything about it is ready to go to put a window in right now. But when we put concrete in, this top part's going to want to sag, so we want to have an upright to help hold that. And also these sides need a little bit of strength, so we'll probably put some lumber around it, put a couple of 2x4s across the bottom, and that way we can put one upright down to the 2x4s just to give that strength up at the top. Because we have a lot of concrete, I think there's going to be a little over 2 foot of concrete at the top. So that'll give strength for this window. We'll see a lot more windows when we get to the main floor of this house.